The Foley Lecture is a biannual leadership lecture series supported by a bequest from Dr. Michael Foley, a graduate of the class of 1950. It's a real pleasure to welcome you all to RCSI this evening for this year's Foley Lecture to be delivered by our distinguished speaker and very welcome guest, Professor Carol Dweck. Carol Dweck is one of the world's leading researchers in the field of motivation. Her research demonstrates the critical role of mindsets in personal achievement and organisational effectiveness. In short, Carol Dweck is somebody that we need to be listening to. When people are in more of a fixed mindset, they believe that their talents and abilities, their very intelligence, is just a fixed trait. But when you're in more of a growth mindset, you believe that talents and abilities are just a starting point. Everyone can develop them further. Professors who endorse more of a growth mindset are more likely to say things like, by virtue of your being a student at this university and enrolling for this class, you have the ability to do well in this course and we will work with you until that happens. Summer before last, a colleague sent me this photo of her five-month-old nephew who had just turned on a computer for the first time. <laughs> That's what figuring out feels like. But when we put too much emphasis on being gifted or talented, we create a generation of students who feel they have to be infallible. Infallible is the enemy of learning. It's the enemy of taking on challenges. I worked with the units in two very large Silicon Valley companies that were characterized by the culture of genius. These people, very skilled and accomplished themselves, felt intimidated by the culture of genius. In both cases, uh, we worked together and they liked this idea of a fabulous struggle. Thereafter, they would start meetings going around the table with people sharing their fabulous struggles. So instead of being a stigma, a badge of low ability, the fabulous struggle was now part of the group process. Every year I teach a freshman seminar, and so the first thing I say to them is, you're not here because Stanford thinks you're a genius. You're here because Stanford found you interesting and feels that you have something to contribute to the university and later to the world. I heard of a high school in Chicago that where students needed something like 84 units to graduate. And if they didn't pass a unit, they got the grade not yet. And I thought that was fantastic. Because if you get a failing grade, you think, I'm not good at this, I hate it, I don't want to do it. But if you get a grade not yet, you think, okay, I'm not at the finish line, but I'm somewhere on a learning trajectory. And the students were completely unashamed of that grade. And in fact, they went around saying to each other, how many not yets do you have? How many not yets do you have? And then they would independently initiate the retaking of the unit and the mastery of it. What impact do you think social media has on a growth mindset? I can see um, social media feeding more of a fixed mindset as people post all their fabulous successes. You know, they're not gonna post a picture of them crying in their room or alone. They're gonna post a being at a party or getting their acceptance letter to RCSI. Uh, <laughs> I would love to see social media where people are posting about their goals, 
the contributions they want to make. Social media has the potential to really help people with their lives. So Professor Dweck, I really enjoyed your book, but I've been struggling to impart some of the learnings from it um, with my children. So my daughter Anna, um, she was you know, getting me to ask her maths questions, and uh, you know, once they started getting too hard, she said, no, no, I, mm -hmm. I don't want that. And then similar patterns in terms of riding a bike. And then so I started saying, Anna, th this isn't really um, the right way to do it. You should be, this is more of a fixed mindset and we need a, a, a growth mindset. How old is Anna? Uh, six. Six. Okay. <laughs> One thing to, you can do is be excited about challenges. Be excited about how can we figure this out? What should we do first? And then you could do a silly thing first. Just this joy in figuring out. Everything is a mystery. On behalf of all of us, you've stimulated us this evening. The power of yet and not yet, I think, is a great, simple concept, and yet so potent in terms of challenging us to think differently. The message that Carol gave on the, the significance of creating an environment where innovation and opportunity uh, and mistakes are acceptable. It really has brought, uh, resonated with a lot of the uh, messages we're trying to institutionalize within the Defence Forces. Sometimes we tend to forget that sort of everybody has potential if you just give them the opportunity. It's things that people know about, but it's probably changing the perspective and giving it a different terminology. And oftentimes even reframing things can get people thinking in ways that they never thought they could um, conceptualize things before. What I think happened tonight was she's persuaded and encourage our faculty to think different about how we educate and that's really inspiring.